Welcome to P4. Today we're looking at vectors in 3D, unit 7.4. So effectively now we're moving past our just 2D vectors and we're introducing that third dimension. The third dimension goes along the Z axis. Now you've already seen I and J. If you remember I was one value along the horizontal J was one unit along the Y and now we have K which is one unit along the Z axis. So you can see here now we've added in that third direction or that third dimension into our vectors. So if I think of my vectors in terms of I J and K. I'm going to use the same as what they're using in your textbooks to make it easier for you. P, Q and R. So very much like our X, Y and Z. Okay, another way of writing this would have been X, I plus Y, J plus Z, K. Which would have been a little bit better. X, Y and Z. Now, a lot of the same rules apply to what we've already looked at. So if we want to add, subtract, or multiply our vectors, the same rules apply. So if I have two vectors, A and B, which I've put here, if I want to work out A plus B, it's exactly the same process as what we did with 2D vectors. The only difference is it's just going to that third dimension, that third set of values. So we have 2 plus 4, 6, 3 plus negative 1 is 2, and 5 plus 2 is 7. So that is our vector. If we want to look at increasing the size of a vector, say 3b, that's 3 times the vector b. So multiplying each of them by 3, we'd have 12 minus 3 and 6. Okay, very, very straightforward. Now, after just looking at that very basics, I'm going to introduce something that I don't think I've mentioned up to this point in these vector videos, and that's position vectors. Okay, now a position vector is the vector from the origin. So if I think in 2D, say this point here, if I make this the coordinate for 3, this is also the vector for 3, or 4i plus 3j. So a position vector is from the origin and what that means is that the position vector is the same as the coordinates at this point and this then can also be applied to three dimensions so if we have our x our y and our z and we have a coordinate that is a four three two then from the origin, this vector here, I'm going to call A, is going to be the vector 4, 3, 2, or the vector 4i plus 3j plus 2k. Okay, so a position vector is from the origin, and it will be the same as the coordinates at the point at the end of that vector. So, hopefully nice and easy for you. Now, position vectors become quite useful for when we want to find vectors that might join two points together, because what we can do is if we have two vectors, we can always go from this vector back to the origin and then up the next vector. So if I have, you know, the vector, the points A and B, and I think of it here, 
and we've got a and b. If I want to find the vector a to b, I can go to the origin and then back from the origin to b. So I'm effectively doing a o plus o b, and that will be the vector a b. Okay, and a o will obviously be the same as a minus o a. So the position vectors, which brings into that origin point into our vectors, become quite important within our calculations. Now, two more things we need to talk about, which is the modulus and the angle. Now, the modulus of a vector, so if we say vector A, if I say that actually A is x i plus y j plus z k then the modulus of this is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared square rooted if you want to know a little bit more about that it's just in 3d pythagoras which you would have done in igcse or gcse and essentially, if you just think of, actually, I will do a very, very quick one. But if you want more details, just look up your IGCSE things, your notes. But if I think very, very quickly in terms of a 3D shape like this, if I want to go from this point to this point, okay, this front bottom, front corner on the left, top, right, and back corner. Okay, if I'm thinking of that and I'm going to give these some letters, so let's call this A, B, C, and D along the bottom, E, F, G, and H along the top. And that diagonal there is A, G. That's in 3D. Now, to be able to find that, you basically need this A, C and the C, G. Okay? And the way you find A, C is A, B squared plus B, C squared and then square rooted. And that gives you A, C, doesn't it? Okay? So thinking about it, A, C squared is that A, B squared plus B, C squared. Now, if I want to find a G. So A G squared is A C squared plus C G squared. So it's that squared plus that squared, which is our right angle triangle here. You can see that this is obviously the line I'm trying to find here. And since we know that A C squared is a b squared plus b c squared we're in g g here so i'll just uh, rub out that g and just replace it with a c you can see that it is the three sides all three sides squared and added up and then, of course, we've been square root, which is why we've got it here. Okay, so hopefully that very, very quickly gives you a little bit of an understanding. Um, let's get rid of it now. But it's certainly you can go and look it up if you want a little bit more about it. Now, in terms of our angles, Than the modulus. Now the angles need to be towards a specific axis. So if we are finding cos of theta towards the x axis, it's going to be x over the modulus of a. Cos of theta towards the y axis will be y over the modulus of a, and cos of theta on the z axis is, you've guessed it, z over the modulus of a and that's what i need to do to be able to find the angle 
that my vector will make with either of the three axes. So, little example here. Find the angle that this vector makes with the positive coordinate axes. So, first thing we're going to need to do is find out the modulus. So, this is 6 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. And that is going to be 7. Once I've done that, then it's about finding each individual one. So cos theta, the angle it makes with the x-axis, is going to be the x-value. So that's going to be 6 over modulus of a, which is 7. And then it's a matter of going to my calculator. And we get 31 degrees. I'm going to do these to the nearest degree. If we look at the value of theta to the y-axis, then it's the y value, which is negative 3, the one in front of j, over 7. And that will give me 115 degrees to the nearest degree. And then finally, cos of theta with the z-axis is going to be 2 over 7. And that will give me 73 degrees. So there are my three angles okay notice that you know the one with the negative here did give us an obtuse angle now i won't do any more examples on this i'll give you a few to try generally it's quite straightforward but i will put the answers at the end as always don't forget if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet just hit the subscribe button you would really be helping me out Thank you.
So in this case, it's, we're looking for the angle this vector makes with a whole plane. So you're thinking of the vector making the angle with like a, essentially a large rectangle. Okay. Then what we want from this rectangle, this xy plane, we want one specific line and it's going to be the line that is essentially in line with this vector. So we'll call that vector B and it's going to be minus 2i plus 6j plus 0k or minus 2i plus 6j and that is so that this then is in the same plane as this one in terms of a vertical plane but this is on the only the xy plane it's not in the z plane at all and that way then we've basically got a triangle okay so we'll have our minus 2i plus 6j and we'll have our minus 2i plus 6j minus 3k here